Now that we've created the tool paths for operation 2 and 4, all that we need to do is this bottom side, which is operation 3. Operation 3 doesn't have any drilling, um, but it ha does have some different contours. So it's going to be a little bit different. But I am going to duplicate operation 2 and 4 to save me a little time on the setup. So right click here, duplicate. First thing I'm going to do is rename this to op 3. Then the next thing I'm going to do is delete the drilling operation because we're not drilling on that. I do need to go to the setup and ensure that we have um, the correct origin, which is this corner right here. So I double click here on op 3. Under model box point, I'm going to click model point here and select that corner as our origin. But the axes are not correct, so I need to collect z-axis. The z-axis is perpendicular to this face, and it still has the correct x-axis along this edge. So now that my work coordinate system is set up, I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to just orient the part here so I can see it a little bit better. And the next thing that we're going to do is look at the contours here. We have this edge here that we need to cut out and also this edge here, and then these two access holes. We're going to do them in different operations. So first thing I'm going to do is double click on the old contour and go to the geometry and delete that geometry. Then um, let's start on these outside contours here. The first thing I'm going to do is select this edge, and this is a little bit tricky because I don't want to be cutting along this back edge here or the front face here, just along the side. So I'm going to click once, click again, click this button here, which is representative of an open contour, and I'm going to slowly work my way around along this edge. It helps uh, me if I zoom in, and just take your time, because if you mess up, you have to start over again. So I get to that point, and I hit the check mark. Then I'm going to go over to here and do the same thing. Click once, click again, hit open contour, and continue around. Then I hit check mark, and let's take a look at the depths. The depth was um, 0.115 from before. I do want to go a little bit deeper just because this is the last face and I don't want any leftover material here, so I'm just going to change the depth to negative 0.15 just to go a little bit deeper. Notice um, the thickness is really negative 0.125 or 125 thousandths or one eighth of an inch thick. I'm just going deeper. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm just cutting into air, but I want to ensure that I'm fully through the material. And that will make it a lot easier for the, for the post-processing crew. So we'll hit OK. And we can visually look at it. Um, nothing fancy here on the lead-ins. Um, we just basically are starting, in fact, over here. You can see the start arrow. And the tool will go in here, cut around or contour around, and then go up, go down here, and then contour on the other side. We can look at the pattern and see that it's going to repeat that again. And it will actually separate the two parts on at least this face. They're not going to fall apart because they're held together on the other three faces, and they're held together in the vise as well. The next thing that we need to do, though, is um, contour these access holes. And the reason why I didn't just add these contours is I didn't want the same lead-in. I don't want the end mill diving into the material, and that's really not safe for an end mill to vertically dive into the material when it enters. And so we need to enter the material um, at some angle, and we're going to talk about that um, next. So the next thing I'm going to do is just with the pattern highlighted, I'm going to go 2D contour and create a new 2D contour, which will be these two, this one here, and this one here. The next thing I'm going to do is just check the tool. The tool is already set at a quarter inch flat end mill, which is what we want to use for the contouring, so I'm not going to change that. All the speeds and feeds are already set. Then go to the depth. 
the depth um, from selected contour, I can go negative 0.15, again, 150 thousandths, which is thicker than the material, which is fine. Um, I could keep it at selected contours, or I could go to origin, origin absolute. They're both going to give me the same depth. The reason why is because the contour that I selected was already at the top of the part, which is the XY plane, and so it's going to go 150 thousandths below that origin being the same thing because that is also the xy plane so it really doesn't matter which one i use um, for this selection the next thing i'm going to do is click here um, on the passes and i'm going to click um, multiple finish passes and i'm going to have one finish pass and i'm going to set it at um, ten thousandths so 0 0.01 i'm not going to change any of the other parameters I'm here, but I am going to do roughing passes, and we're just not even going to change any of the parameters on the roughing pass. What a finish pass does, um, basically, um, you can have finish passes on different depths or finish passes along um, the width of the actual contour. So what's going to happen is the end mill is going to cut that little slot, that little teardrop, or that little slot there but it's going to leave a little bit of material. Specifically, it's going to leave 10 thousandths of an inch. And then it's going to come back again and cut over or step over and cut that last 10 thousandths. The reason why we often do that is when you're initially cutting the material, the end mill will deflect a little bit. And when you're pushing through a lot of material and cutting it, that end mill deflects more. And so if we cut out most of the material but leave just a tiny amount, 10 thousandths, when it comes back and just cuts off that 10 thousandths of an inch that's left, the tool doesn't deflect as much and you get a much cleaner surface. So we often refer to that as a finish pass. And there's a lot of options on the finish passes and this is not the tutorial to go over all the details, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that there. The final thing I'm going to do is talk about um, how you can lead in. Um, we talked about the kind of the standard lead in before where we just kind of dived into air and then we cut through and what I'd like to do is use um, a, a curved lead in I'm just going to use the default and you'll be able to see what this is basically it has a lead in radius of 25 thousandths with a lead in sweep angle of 90 degrees and then the linear lead in distance of 25 thousandths and we'll just leave that the same but I am going to do a little ramp. And this is kind of a, like a helical ramp entry, and you'll um, see this in a moment. And basically, it's going to start above the material. Currently, it's at 10 thousandths or 100 thousandths above. And it's going to kind of cur go around in the air and slowly work its way down at a 2 degree angle as it enters into the material. We'll just keep that as a default. The one thing I'm going to do is just change this to half the depth. Um, because I don't want to wait so long at the machine. I don't want it to wait, um, start at 100 thousandths above and work its way down. Let's start at 50 thousandths above. To help visualize this, and I think it'll make more, a lot more sense if we just look at the actual simulation. So let's go OK and take a look at what the tool path's going to actually look like. So you can see that the tool's going to dive in here and it has our little lead in. But this is still in the air. And you can see that it's in the air if we have this view here. So we're above the part, specifically at 50 thousandths above the part. So we have our little lead in, we have the lead in radius that we talked about before. And then we have this helical entry as it ramps in. Um, and it kind of wind its, winds its way down until it eventually enters into the material at that two degree angle that we talked about. And so it's winding its way down through the material until it gets to the final depth, which is 150 thousandths. And then it cuts around. But if you look at the very bottom, um, that's the, where the color changes here to blue, you can see that there are two different um, curves because one is the roughing pass, which leaves a little bit of material. Specifically, we set it at 10 thousandths of an inch. And then the second is the finishing pass where it comes back and cleans that up. So if we look here, we can see it a little bit better. And we should be good. 
so what I'm going to do is hit the operation 3 and we can simulate and hit play we can see that it does the cutouts and then it actually um, does the access holes here one thing I might want to do is do the access holes before I do the cutouts and that's an easy fix so what I'm going to do with that is go close here and just drag this tool path above this one so basically it will do the the access holes first and then it will contour out the edge we're done